What's going on everyone? This is Ryan. Welcome back to another Animal Crossing New Horizons video and uh, this one's going to be a bit of a long one. In this video, we're going to break down exactly how the island rating system works and what you need to do in order to bring your one star island up to a three star island or even up to a five star island. So as you all know, when you talk to Isabel to get your island evaluated, she'll first tell you what your current rating is and then if it's anything less than five stars, she'll give you a very, very, very vague statement on what to do to increase your rating. She'll say things like plant more flowers, plant more trees, place more furniture. So you plant 100 flowers, you place down 100 pieces of furniture, you plant more trees, you put out more fencing, and then you go back and talk to Isabel, and she says you still need to plant more flowers. So what the heck gives? How many flowers are you actually supposed to plant? How many pieces of furniture are you supposed to actually have out? What's the deal here? So when Isabel says things like plant more flowers, she's actually only giving you a partial step in the right direction for what you need to do to get the next star. You see, for a while, we all thought that in order to get a specific rating, you had to have have X amount of a certain thing. So people thought it was like 50 flowers, 50 trees, 50 fences, and it turns out that's not the case. As much as I know you guys are going to hate hearing this, let me go ahead and start off by saying this. There is no set amount of any items that you need in order for you to increase your rating. There are really only general estimates on the number of things that you could put out to increase your rating, but that's based on a ton of different factors. You see, the island rating system is actually based on an internal point system that is split into two separate categories. Scenery, and development. And in order to increase your island rating, you need to have a specific amount of points in both of those categories. Scenery points comes from things like trees, flowers, shrubbery, and then DIY furniture that you put out on your island. While development points comes from furniture that you can purchase either through Nook's Cranny or through the Nook Shopping Services Center, either with Nook Miles or with Bells. And they also come from things like bridges, inclines, the shops, and the museum itself. Each of these things is assigned a different point value, which we'll go over here shortly. First, let's go over how many points in each that you need in order to get a specific rating one through five. So a one star rating is the base rating. That means you have six or fewer villagers, including yourself on your island. You have less than 80 points in development and less than 200 points in scenery. For a two star rating, you need to have at least seven other villagers, not including yourself. You also need to have 80 to 159 points in development and 200 to 269 points in scenery. A three star rating, which is actually also where you unlock the KK Slider concert, as well as terraforming, is usually where you're going to want to end up at least. To get a three star rating, you need to have anywhere between seven to eight other villagers, 160 to 399 points in development, and 270 to 349 points in scenery. For a four star, you need to have at least nine other villagers, 400 to 664 points in development, and 350 to 449 points in scenery. And finally, for a five star rating, you need at least nine other villagers, six 185 plus points of development and 450 plus points in scenery. This is where your island will also start growing the rare lilies of the valley flower and also where you'll unlock the DIY recipe for the golden watering can. So what does that all mean? How do you get points? Well, as I mentioned before, the decorations and furniture you display on your island are actually assigned different point values, but it's a bit more complicated than just a chair is worth one point. The grading for furniture is probably the most complex when it comes to grading, so we're going to get to that last for now, we're going to start with the basics for scenery, which in this case would be trees and flowers. So for trees, and this includes any type of tree, so bamboo trees, coconut trees, cedar trees, and then fruit trees, all trees are worth one point when they are fully grown. They are worth absolutely no points when they're chopped down or while they're in the middle of growing. Flowers, interestingly enough, have three separate point values during all stages of their life. Flower sprouts, which you can see right in front of me, is the thing that you see the moment you plant a flower, and that is worth 0.5 points. Flower buds like this to the left of my character are worth 0.7 points. And flower stems, which are what you see when you pluck a flower like this, this is actually also worth 0.7 points. And finally, full grown flowers like all the ones you see around here surrounding my character are all worth one point. So just in this scene right here, doing the quick math, two trees gives me two points. I see 24 full grown flowers, so 24 points. And then we have two flower stems, so that would be 0.7 points each, so 1.4 points total for those two. Adding everything up together, you have a total of 27.4 points in this particular area of my island if I did my math right. All right, so this part is actually recorded a little bit later in the video, but I wanted to throw it in because I forgot about it. Trees actually max out at 190 points. So if you're going for like a jungle theme or a forest theme island, just keep in mind that after 190 trees, no tree past that point is going to give you any scenery points. So just a heads up. So that was the easier part of scenery. As I mentioned, the other part of scenery is DIY furniture, but we're gonna get to furniture in a moment. For now, let's go to the easier part of 
of development points, which as I mentioned earlier, are buildings and structures like bridges and inclines. So simply enough, each building is worth 15 points. The museum is 15, the Able Sisters is 15, and your Nook's Cranny is actually only worth 15 points when it's upgraded like this. So when it's in its more basic form, the previous form before this one, it's not worth anything. Because the shops and the museum are kind of like the natural progression of the game, you can essentially say that you always start off with a base of 45 development points. Bridges and inclines are actually all worth 15 as well. So really, you can probably fill out your development points really easy, considering the fact that each building and each bridge and incline that you build is a static 15 points, and you can actually load up your island pretty easily with bridges and inclines. It should be noted that you can only have eight inclines on your island total, which really only gives you about 120 points. To be honest with you, for the three star rating, you only need anywhere between 160 to 399. So at 120 points for eight inclines and then 45 points for your shops, I mean, you're already at 165 points. If anything, you should be good to go from there, in theory, at least. And that is the easier part for how you score development points. Are you still with me? <laughs> now for the tricky part. How do you score furniture? To calculate furniture, I'm actually just going to go to this little part of my island and uh, explain a little more. So as I mentioned previously, DIY furniture gives you scenery points while purchase furniture gives you development points. The good news here, at least in some regard, is that scenery points and development points for furniture are scored on the exact same system. So when I explain this, you can use them for both. Furniture is significantly different because furniture is graded on an eight by eight tile that is known as a block. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab some fencing here so I can kind of outline what that size is on my island really quick. I've removed my camera really quick so I can show you this is an eight by eight tile known as a block, which is basically everything from the upper left hand corner down to the bottom right hand corner where the end of my pond is. So the difference between grading furniture and grading everything else is that furniture in this block is actually graded as a unit rather than being graded individually. Now there are three types of furniture that do get individual points and that's based on their size and that is the furniture that is three by one, three by two, and three by three tiles in size. If you're unsure how big a piece of furniture is, you can actually go to your DIY recipe book and right underneath the name of it, you can see this little uh, yellow square here that tells you what size it is. So for example, you, the fountain you can kind of see is three by three and then this flat garden rock is two by one. That's how you can figure out what size something is if you didn't know that before. Now you can't do this with purchase furniture, unfortunately, you can't check the size. So it's kind of intuitive whenever you place the furniture down for you to figure out what size that piece of furniture is. Now, it's important to note that furniture of these three sizes, the three by one, three by two, and three by three need to be unique in order for them to count for points. What I mean by that is like, let's say you have two fountains in one eight by eight block. It will only count one of them for one point because it can only count unique pieces of furniture for that prerequisite there. Now, the other types of furniture, like the one by ones, the one by fives, the two by ones, ones, things like that, those are given points based on the other furniture that you have inside of the block. If you're really ready to get down into the nitty gritty of optimizing these blocks, uh, get ready to do a little math. I'm just going to put a bunch of different furniture down. That way I can fill the block up and you can see kind of exactly what I'm working with in regards to trying to get points for this block here. Okay, this isn't a lot, but it's good enough for me to continue on with the explanation. So points in a block for furniture are calculated in two different ways. The first way is the number of items times 0.25. So in this block, for example, you can see that I have three DIY items that would all count for scenery. And because I have less than 10 pieces of furniture for DIY furniture, they these would all only be worth 0.25. So in this block for scenery, I have 0.75 points. And again, I have two non-DIY furnitures here. So there's less than 10, two times 0.25. For development, I'm adding 0.5 points to my total development score. The second way that furniture gets calculated in a block is the types of furniture times 0.75. But that only happens when you have at least 10 or more different pieces of furniture for the different points, either scenery or development. So if you were to have 10 or more different different types of furniture in a block. First, you would calculate the number of furniture placed times 0.25, which would be 2.5. And then you would add how many different types of furniture times 0.75. So for 10 different pieces of furniture, all unique in DIY, you would get a total of 10 points for that particular block in scenery. And that's how the grid system or the block system works for getting points for furniture. If you've survived this far, uh, then great job. Let's keep going. <laughs> there are bonus points that you can get from purchased furniture as well. Purchased 
furniture placed outside that is recommended for being outdoors gets you an additional 0.5 points each. So it's a little outside the 8x8 block, but it's in my immediate vicinity. The street lamp, for example, would be considered an outdoor purchase furniture, and so that would be worth 0.5 points. However, the whiteboard is not considered to be an outdoorsy item, and so it's not worth any extra points whatsoever. It doesn't matter whether or not you're putting the whiteboard outside to be like, hey, look, here's my outside basketball court. The game itself doesn't consider that you would put something like that outdoors. And so even though it makes sense for your island or what it is that you're trying to do, it will not give you any bonus points. For purchase furniture, you also get bonus points based on the cost of the item placed outside. So if the item is worth 2,000 or 20,000 bells, it is giving you an additional one point. So for example, this antique bureau or antique chair, if I were to put them outside, they would be worth one point each. And furniture that you place outside that is worth more than 20,000 bells, like this antique clock here, would get you two points each. The last bonus points you can get for development is actually fencing, which is pretty interesting because fences you have to build. Regardless, it does count towards your development points and each piece of fencing that you put out is worth 0.2 points each. <sighs> And that's it for how to it kind of increase your island rating. I don't expect anybody to now then go outside to their island and start forming eight by eight blocks and trying to figure out how many points in each particular block that they have. But I think this is important information to know because what this does is it takes away the assumption that in order to get a three star rating or a five star rating, you have to have a hundred flowers, you have to have a hundred fencing, you have to have 20 pieces of DIY furniture, you have to have eight bridges and five inclines, you get what I mean. So now you know that when Isabel is telling you to plant more flowers, she's not saying necessarily that you need to plant more flowers, she's just telling you that you need some more scenery points. Okay, so that's all good, but what does that mean when she says things like you need to clean up your island, you need to tidy up your island? What does that mean? Does it mean you need to pick up the tree branches? Does it mean you need to clean up the shells? What's going on? Do you have too many items out? What does that mean? Well, yes and no. So there are two things that Isabel is talking about when it comes to things that are detrimental to your island rating, and that is clutter and litter. So the reason I'm still sitting in this eight by eight block is because this is how clutter is determined. If 45 or more tiles in this eight by eight block are covered, the block itself is considered cluttered. There are things that don't contribute to this, like buildings and bridges, rocks and cliffs, pretty much anything natural. And then if there's anything buried, like fossils, or if you decide to just bury a piece of furniture in the ground for some reason, those don't count towards the clutter. As for littering, littering is when there are 15 or more small items dropped on the ground. Now it's important to note that dropping is different than placing. If I were to place this natural garden table, you will see that it just gets thrown out in front of me and it gets used as furniture. However, when you drop an item, that is when you see it turn into this little nook leaf right here. This is what Isabel is talking about when she's saying that there's too much litter. It should also be noted that if you drop items on stalls, like let's say you have some sort of marketplace area or just somewhere that people can go around and just pick up items and you want to use it as like a display, items dropped on stalls like this so they're not touching the ground, they actually still count as litter, so there's really no way to get around it. Conversely, what people think you should be cleaning up, like rocks, tree branches, shells, and star fragments, those actually don't count as litter. So when Isabel says there's too much litter, don't think it's because you didn't pick up all the shells on the beach or all the tree branches sitting out on your island. Those are totally fine. Ladies and gentlemen, that is the complete breakdown of how the island rating system works here in Animal Crossing New Horizons. So if there's anybody out there looking for a straightforward, this is what you have to do, uh, I apologize, but unfortunately the island rating system apparently is not as easy as we all thought. I mean, other than a five-star rating telling you you have to have more than 665 points in development and 450 points in scenery, it's all pretty vague. I mean, for a three-star, you need 160 to 399 in development, and for scenery, you need 270 to 349. It's kind of hit or miss in regards to which number you need to have, but my suggestion is that if she's telling you you need more flowers, you need more scenery, and so uh, probably plant more flowers, plant more trees or something. I will end off with this when it comes to scoring points in scenery. Flowers are going to score you way more points in the long run than trees, because one, flowers give you points at every given stage of their life, and you can plant way more of them. They only take up a one by one tile on your island, whereas trees essentially take up a two by two plot, and they take longer to grow. So if your goal is to not only get to a five star or a three star rating quickly, and you want to do it with 
without using up too much space, flowers are going to be the way to go for that. There's nothing in the system that says that you have to have variety in terms of where they're placed on your island, but I think it would be good practice to kind of just scatter about your scenery and development points all throughout, just in case. You know, there's so many people out there today, and then even as people are picking up this game, that are wondering how much furniture or flowers they need to have out on their island. And, you know, there are a lot of times where people will tell someone else, like, here's what I did. I had a hundred flowers, I had a hundred of this furniture, but when it comes to furniture, they're not explaining the size of the furniture that they're using, the types of furniture that they're using, whether or not it was purchased. So even though it might be easy to say 50 flowers, it's then not easier to then mix that in with 50 pieces of furniture without breaking down like an itemized list of every piece of furniture that was put down. So for those of you that are currently working on trying to get your island rating up, and for those of you that just kind of wanted to know, if you found this video informative and helpful, please be sure to give it a like. And don't forget to share this video as well for people who are wondering how the whole system works. And if you're new to the channel, consider subscribing for more Animal Crossing New Horizons videos in the future. I usually don't post a lot of guides like this, at least not as of late, but I have been getting a lot of questions lately about what they can do to increase your island rating. And so I figured I'd go ahead and throw this one up. Otherwise guys, that'll do it for me. Thank you so much. Again, I hope it was informative. I hope it was helpful. I hope you guys enjoyed. And until next time, I'll see you later. Have a good day. Bye.